Hi everyone! Today we're going to build the 4 in a row game, or as we all know it, Connect 4 game. Before we start, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I hope you answer them down in the comment section below. So, the first question is, if you were to build this by yourself, what other tools are you going to be using? For me, I'm going to use CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. The second question is, what would you use to render your components? Would you use the canvas or HTML elements? For me, I'm going to use HTML elements, so just devs. And for the last question, what would you use to move things around? Would you use CSS animations or JavaScript? For me, I'm going to use JavaScript. And that's it for the questions. Now let's go and see the demo of our final product. Well, before we start typing the code for the game, we need first to get some files from our GitHub repo. So that's going to be our starter template. So if you click this link in the description and then choose starter template, you would see that we have a folder called assets. And this file here has some audio files. These are our uh, sound effects. And here images, which is just one image, which is the bot. This is a transparent uh, image. Now let's go and clone this and start from there. So I'm just going to go here and copy the URL for this repo and then close this. Now let's go and open a terminal and then run git clone. And I want to clone just the starter template, not the whole repo. So template. And then paste in the link for the repo and then hit enter. Now that it's done, you can see I have a folder here called four in a row game JavaScript. So that's the name of the repo. Now let's go and open that folder or that project in VS Code. So here I have VS Code and my browser side by side. And I also open the final project here. So whenever we need to take a look on the final project, it's there and we know exactly what we're going to do next. So let's go and open folder and then go to the desktop and then select our folder here, select folder. And we can see that we have all the assets there, the audio files and the images. And now I think we are ready to start typing our code and we need to start with HTML. So let's go and create the markup for the game. Well, let's go and create our index.html file. So index.html and then using emit, let's create our HTML boilerplate. Let's change the title to four in, in a row game. Let's save and then let's go live. So we're running a live preview of our project. It's going to be a blank page, of course. Now let's go and create the markup for the game. So the first thing is our game container. So we dev with the class name game container. And then inside, I dev with the class name balls. So this is where we're going to render these balls here, the balls we play with. And then after it's going to be an image with the class name board. Uh, the source file is going to be assets, then images, then board.png, and you can see it there. Now, after the image or the board, it's going to be the columns. And we have seven columns. So I'm going to create these as devs as well. So let's go and say a dev with the class name column. They all have uh, one attribute called data column. And I'm going to set it to zero and then multiply this by seven and hit enter. And now I have these seven columns. Data column for the first one is going to be zero. Then this one's going to be one, then two, then three, four, five, and six. And those are our columns. So this is actually what we see here at the top. And then we have the game over dev. So this is actually just showing the line. So when the someone wins, for example, if I go and win, oh no. So this line here is going to be inside a dev with the class name game over. Now let's go and create another dev with the class name game stats. So this is where we show the score and also these two buttons here, reset score and play again. So we have two devs, one is going to be stats and the second one is going to be buttons. For the stats, we have three devs, one, two, three. The first one is going to be player capitalized. Second one is going to be score. 
the last one is going to be opponent and that's it let's uh, just hard code the score for now and let's go into buttons and create a div with the class name called reset score then inside is going to be i button that says reset score reset score or capitalize now let's go to our project so we have here the score and reset score button let's just go and duplicate that let's say here play again and then play again text and hit save now we can see we have everything we need for our game so we have the board itself the score the reset score play again so we just need to style these so let's go and style our game Now let's go and create our styles.css file and let's go and link this to our HTML file. So the href is going to be styles.css. Now let's go and do some resetting. So I'm going to set the patterns to zero for every element, then the margins as well. So if I hit save, you can see I have no margins anymore here. Now let's go and set the font family to Arial and have it to and sans serif for four back fonts then let's go and change the body background color so background color then it's going to be 0d1117 and there it is now let's go and create some variables so the first thing is the dimensions of our game so let's call this game container width i'm going to set this to 700 pixels so if you remember we have like uh, seven uh, uh, columns so each column is going to be 100 width 100 pixels for the width so 700 pixels uh, in total now for the heights so I'm just going to go and duplicate that for the height is going to be just 600 because I have here six rows and now let's actually apply this width and height for our game container so the that game container is going to have a width of var game container width and then the height is going to be var game container height hit save and actually I also need to set the balls dev this image here as well and the columns all these will have the same uh, width and height as the container so let's just go and add those here so it's going to be the balls container or the balls dev then the board image and then the columns as well if i hit save now you can see them there so we have i guess here we have the balls then we have the the board and then the columns now i want to stack them uh one on top of the other uh, inside the game container so i'm gonna go and set the game container position to relative and then everyone else here there's three here devs their position will be absolute so now they are all on top of each other if i open the elements inspector if i go and hover over the balls you can see there the board and also the columns so they are on top of each other now i'm going to go and style the game container first so so i'm going to add some padding top and i'm going to set this to 100 pixels so we have this button here it's 100 pixels so i'm going to hit uh, save now let's go and actually change the color here so let's use that so let's say background color is going to be this color here now let's go and save these as variables so let's go and say game container button 100 pixels and then game container bg color let's use this color here and let's use this as a var so game container background color and then var game container padding hit save and there it is now i'm gonna go and zoom out a little bit so you can see that our game container always stacked to the left so i'm going to position this in the center so i'm going to just add some margin here let's say 4 rem for top and bottom and then auto for left and right so this will center our game container now let's go and make these two corners here rounded so let's go and say border radius or border top left radius i'm going to set this to two rems the same thing for the top right radius hit save you can see now that they are both rounded now so let's go and save this as a variable because we might need it uh, later so game container then radius two rems and let's actually use that here so radius with an i and a u and then the same thing for the top right one 
and that's it. And now it's time to go and style our columns. So if I open the inspector here, if I go into the columns, you can see that we have these columns here. So I'm going to set their width to 100 pixels and their height to the game container height. So it's here. So this uh, column here has the same height as the container, the game container, and the width of 100 pixels. So let's go here into the styles and then at the bottom here, let's say columns. And let's actually go and style this column here. For the width, it's going to be the var. So game container width divided by the number number of columns, right? So it's actually going to be calc. So the function calc is going to calculate this variable here divided by this variable here that we actually need to create. So the number of columns is going to be uh, seven columns. We have seven columns. Now 700 by seven is going to be 100 pixels. Now for the height, we said it's going to be the height of the game container. And let's actually go and open the element inspector. Now if I hover over this, you can see we have them here. So this is the first one, the second and the third one. Now I want these devs here to actually match these columns here in, in this image. So I want them to be aligned. So let's go here and say columns, columns, then display these as flex. So if I go here now, inspect, you can see them there. So now they match our bold. Now, when I hover over these columns here, you can see that they get this background color. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use column hover, which is a class name we will add using JavaScript. But I'm going to just have code it for now. So let's say uh, column hover. I'm going to go and hit save. Now let's go into here and set the background color to RGBA. It's going to be a black color with uh, an opacity of 0 0.4. So now this now this will be applied only when I hover over the, the, the column. So now if I hover over this, you can see it there. Now I need to round these corners here. So I'm going to add a border radius for all the corners of three rams. So now if I hover over this, and now it's time to go and create some balls here. We actually need to create them using JavaScript again, but I'm just going to go and hard code them. So first I'm going to get rid of this hover here and then let's go into the balls and create a div with the class name player and also another one with the class name opponent. So let's go into the styles. Now let's go and say balls. So for the player and the opponent balls, they are the same balls. They have the same width, the same height, etc. The only difference is that the player has a different color than the opponent has. So for the background color of the player, I'm going to use a var. Uh, so it's a player ball color. And for this one, it's going to be background color. Let's just say opponent ball color. And let's go and create this two here. So I'm just going to go and copy both of these. Let's go to the top here. So for the player ball color, it's going to be this color. And for the opponent ball color, it's going to be this color. Now let's go and create a variable called ball size. So the size of the ball is going to be 60 pixels. And it will have a border, so ball border size of 10 pixels. So let's go to the bottom. For both of these, so let's say the width to var ball size, the height var ball size as well. So you can see we have two rectangles here. Let's actually set the top for now to minus 100 pixels just to see them. And let's set their position to absolute to take effect. So now you can see them there. Let's go and move the player to the left by, let's say 200 pixels, just to see them. So we have here our opponent ball and the player ball here to the right. So let's add a border radius of 50 to make them appear like balls. Now let's add a border of var of our ball border size. So that's going to be 10 pixels and then solid and then a black color. Hit save. Now you can see the balls there. I guess that's it for the balls. So now I'm just going to go and remove this top here and this left. And now let's go and style our game stats. This tape here. Let's first get rid of these balls here. 
So we're going to inject the balls here using JavaScript. So stats.css, then it's going to be the game stats dev. So for the game stats dev, it will have a width of the game container width, the same as the width of our game, but the height is going to be 200 pixels. And let's actually use this as a variable. So var, let's say game stats, stats uh, height. Let's go and create that at the top here. So game stats height. All right, now let's go and set the position of it to absolute. And then add the background color. So let's say the background color of this to be bar, then the game container background color. And you can see it there. Now let's put this here at the bottom. So because I set the position to absolute, if I go and say bottom zero, you can see that it's actually at the bottom of our game container, but it still covers the board, which is not what we want. So what we need here is to move down this here a little bit more, like with uh, the height of this game stats dev. So I'm just going to go and use this here and put it here. So if I had save, you can now see that it moves up with 200 pixels, but we need to actually move it down. So we need a minus here. I, can, I can't just use the minus there. I need actually to use minus one times the var and put the whole thing in the cog uh, method. So now you can see it there. Now let's go and style these balls here and the score and also the buttons. So to style the balls, let's go and use game stats. And the balls are just the player and the opponent. So I'm just going to go and override the styles and set the right top and left positions for these two here. So for both the balls inside the game stats, they will both have the same top property, which is going to be 60 pixels. And then I'm going to move the player to the left by 60 pixels as well. But then for the opponent, I'm going to move this by 360 pixels. And that's it. Now let's go and style the score here. So let's go and say score. Then the position is going to be absolute. Then the color is going to be white for the text. And then I'm going to set the font size to 3 rem. And then let's go and say and set the top to 70 pixels. And then the left position to 200 pixels. And now let's go and style our buttons here. So they live inside the dev with the class name buttons. So let's style the apparent first. So I want to put this to the right. So I'm going to set its position to absolute, then the right position to zero. And let's actually set the background just to see what's going on. And that's it. Now let's set the width to var, let's say the game stats height. And as well, the same thing for the height. Now you can see it there. Let's get rid of the background color and let's set the border left to one pixel solid and then 7a, 7a, 7a. That's a great color. Now let's go and center the buttons. I want to put them here. So I'm just going to go and use flex to do that. Flex, direction to column, then align items center, then justify content center. And now they are centered. Now let's go and style at the buttons. So I'm going to use buttons, then button. So both the buttons. Let's set the border to none. And then the pattern to one rem. The font size to one pound one rem. So I want to make the text bigger. Then the color to white. Uh, it's not going to appear now, but later on I'm going to change the background. And then the border radius to one rem and that's it now let's go and start each of the buttons so it will have different background colors so i'm going to go and set the reset reset score score button so its background color will be this color and then the play again button its background color will be 600 d93 and let's add some margin top of one rem and it's that now let's go and add some hover effects to these buttons here so i'm going to add the same hover effect for both so when i hover over them i want the cursor to be pointer so they will give you the feel that they are clickable now 
I also want to change the filter or the brightness of these two buttons to like a 1.5 brighter than the normal state. So now you can see that the brightness changes. But I want to do this using some transitions. I don't want just to go directly to that brightness. So I'm going to go here and use a transition on the filter property with 0 0.2 seconds is in out. So now if I hover over this, now it looks great. Now let's go and start these buttons here when they are disabled. So if I go here to this button here, let's say disabled, the same thing for this one. When I add this a disabled property, I want them to look like this. So let's say dot buttons, then button, then disabled. And so I'm going to go and set the background color to 4C, 4C, 4C. That's it for the colors. I don't want to change the brightness anymore. So I'm just going to go and set filter, then brightness to one. Now, if I hover, you can see that we still change the brightness. So I just need to go and cut this and put it after the hover effect. So now if I hover over this, it doesn't have any effect anymore. I also want to set the color to black. So let's go and set the color of the text to black. And let's go and get rid of the cursor pointer. So let's set the cursor back to default. And I guess that's it for the buttons. Now let's go and style the line or the game over line. So this part here is what's left for now. So let's go into our style. Let's go to the bottom and the uh, comment says game over. So let's go and style the game over uh, dev. Now the game over dev width and height will be the same as the game container. That's because we need to uh, be able to draw that line everywhere in this area here. So let's go and set the width to the var game container width and the same thing for the height. So var game container height. Uh, we shall not see anything. Let's say the position to absolute as well. So let's actually use the background color just to see what's happening here. So you can see now our game over uh, dev. Now let's get rid of this background here. Let's actually go and style our line. Now for the line, I want to set the width let's say uh, 250 pixels. We're going to talk about the width in a minute. And then the height is going to be 10 pixels. We can't see anything for now. Let's set the background to white. Now you can see our line there. Let's set its border radius to var game container uh, radius. And now let's set its position to absolute so I can move it around like it wants. So for example, if I set left to let's say 100, and 45 pixels and then the top to 145 pixels as well you can see it's starting from this ball so it's like i want to connect these four balls let's actually add some width here let's say 300 pixels 310 pixels yeah that's right so now i am like connecting these four uh, balls here now if i want to connect this vertical balls here all i need to do is use transform so if I go and use transform, then let's say rotate this by 90 degrees, you can see how it rotated. The problem here is when I rotated this by 90 degrees, it actually used its center as the origin for that rotation. So what I want to do is to move that origin to this place here, which is x0 and y0 for the position. So I'm going to set transform origin here to 0. Uh, for x and y. So now you can see that the rotation axis is this position here. So if I go back to like let's say 0, let's say 45, etc. So you get the idea. And now I think you have observed the issue here. So when the line is diagonally drawn, you can see that the width of the line is not enough to cover the, the four uh, balls here. So I can go now and fix that by using some other classes. So let's say, for example, one for horizontal. So when I want to draw the line horizontally, I'm going to set the width to 310 pixels. If it's vertical, it's going to be the same thing, no problem. But when it's horizontal, it's going to be 403 pixels. So let's go and open the inspector and let's go to game over the line. And then let's actually add diagonal here. And let's go and change this to diagonal. If I had save, you can see now that it covers all these four balls. Now, I want to add some animations to the line. I don't want the line to just pop up to the screen when some of the players win. So, what I want to do is I'm going to set the width here to zero and then add some transitions for the width. 
So I want to change the width from zero pixels to this amount here based on if it's vertical, or horizontal or diagonal. So the width here will change in 300 milliseconds and then with an ease in out. So let's save that. Now let's go and inspect this. Now let's go and remove diagonal. Let's just keep line. So if I use diagonal here, you can see that we have that animation like we are drawing that line over those balls. So that's what we actually need to accomplish. And now for the this line here, I'm just gonna go and get rid of this because we are actually going to determine the angle of rotation using JavaScript. So when someone of the players win, then we are going to determine whether the, the balls are aligned horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. And then based on that, we're going to use the right angle. So let's just get rid of this and then hit save and let's go and refresh. And that's it for starting the game. Now it's time for the JavaScript part. Well, let's go and create a script file. So let's call it game.js and let's link this with our HTML file. So script and then game.js. Let's go back here and then console log. Let's say first open the console and it's there. Now, the first thing I will do here is to create a ball and position it like place it anywhere I want. So if I go to the index.html, we have this dev with the class name balls. This is where we actually render the balls. So if I go and say player, hit save, you can see the ball here. It needs just to be positioned. How do we position the ball is like this. So if I go to the star.css, we have this player the ball. If I go and change its top because I set the position to absolute, so I can go and see, for example, minus 100 pixels. So now it's moved to the top. If I say left, then let's say 100 pixels. So now it moved to the right. So that's how I will create the balls. And this is how I will go and position them. So let's go and remove this from here and also remove this one from here. And let's do it with the JavaScript. So I'm going to create a const, let's call it ball, and then use document that create element. And I'm going to create a dev element. Then I'm going to change its class name. So set attribute the class to let's say player and then i'm going to go and append this to the balls uh, the dev with the balls class name so let's go to the top here and say elements so this is where i will go and create my or target my elements so it's going to be an object and then inside all my elements so balls is going to be document that query selector then the class name is going to be balls so this is where i, I will go and uh, add this ball to so if i go here and say balls that append child so, oh, so it must be elements that balls that append child and then the ball if i had saved now we can see the ball in there now if i just go and say ball our ball dot style to access the top property we used in CSS. if i set it here to let's say minus 100 pixels just like we did it's now appearing at the top here let's change the ball dot style dot left and set it for example to 100 pixels it's now moved to the right like we did with CSS. So this is what we actually going to do using JavaScript, just moving the top and left positions to move around to move around the, the balls. So let's actually go and create a function to do the job. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all this code here and put it inside a function called generate ball. So and then paste that inside. Now let's go and call this generate ball. And we should get the same result now for the balls we have two balls the player and the opponent so why not pass in a ball here type and use that as the class name here ball then type and let's go and pass in here opponent hit save now it's the opponent ball if we say player now it's going to be the player ball that's good now now i don't want to go and type in this all the time so player and when i want to change it i will need to change it in different places so why not just go and create some variables here and then say const game so this will be a an object which will have all the variables that our game will need so for example the ball the ball type so it's also going to be an object with two uh two properties the first one is going to be player which will be equal to a string player then the second one is going to be uh opponent then it's gonna be just this the string opponent so i'm going to hit save and it's it now if i go and say here game that ball type dot opponent opponent we have and then here same thing here opponent now we get the same result now one thing i want to do as well is i don't want to always use this pixels here 
So because I'm going to change the top and left position of the ball in different places. So I don't want to go each time and use these pixels, make this a string, etc. So why not use a helper function? So let's go and say helpers and then create a function called to pixel that will take an amount and then return the amount and then return the amount in pixels. So let's say, so I'm going to use a template literal here, then amount, then pixels. So instead of using minus 100 pixels, I'm just going to go and use to pixel then minus 100 and I should get the same result. Let's do the same thing here. So to pixel then get rid of pixel and that works just fine. And now one other thing that's going to be very helpful for like debugging the game is get rid of these numbers here. So when I say 100, it actually doesn't mean a lot. So what I will do here is instead of using these numbers here, I'm going to use the number of columns. So for example, here I have this column here has a number zero like we did in HTML. So here we have this first one has a number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of using pixels, I'm going to use the number of columns. For example, I want to put the ball in the column zero. So it's going to be somewhere here. Then I want to put it exactly in row zero. So it's going to be here. So if I use zero for the column and zero for the row, then the ball will be here. So how can I do that? So I'm going to the game here and say a column here. I'm going to add a column object and I'm going to set the width of the column here. So it's going to be 100. So if you remember in style.css, the column here has a width of the game container width divided by the number of columns and that's 700 by seven, which is 100 pixels. So each column here has a 100 pixels. And now I would use an offset for, for the ball. So we have this, if I zoom in, we have this little space here. So I want to put the ball here. So this distance here is exactly 10 pixels. So I'm just going to go and call that an offset and the column with the whole column is 100 pixels. So let's reset the zoom. And now let's go here to change the left position using the column. So if I say zero, the, the ball should be in this column here. If I say one, it should be here. If I say two, it should be here, etc. So what I would do here is I'm just going to go and take the number of the column and then multiply it by the column width. So the column dot width. So if I go and use one here, the column dot width. Oh, I should use game dot column dot width. So you can see that now it moved by a column, not just by one pixel here. If I use two, it's going to be on the second column here. And if I use three, it's going to be here. And I always need to add that game, that column, that offset to make it align with the holes in that column. Now let's go and do the same thing with the rows. So when I want to change the top position of the ball, I'm going to talk about the rows. So this is row number zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And I'm going to call this the row minus one. Now, if you have noticed, the balls or the holes here are separated by the same amount horizontally and vertically. That makes this row have a height of 100 pixels, an offset of 10 as well. So now I'm just going to go and grab this here, this code, and change column with row. And here, instead of the width, I'm going to use height. Now, if I save, you can see now that the ball is in the third column and the third row. If I use, for example, zero here for row and zero for a column, it's going to be in this place here. And this is actually great. And now you can see that this code looks almost the same thing. And as well as these width and height are both equal, the same number, the offset, the same. So I'm just going to go and get rid of these two here and call this a step. So the step, and uh, let's call this amount. And then all I need to do is to go and change all these to step. And then here it's going to be amount, hit save, and we get the same result. And now you can see that this code here is the same as this one. So why not put in this inside a function? So let's go and grab these two here and then create a function called calculate ball position. And I'm going to call this row or column. So you could give either the row or the column and I'm going to return that position. And instead of zero here, let's use row or column. So now let's go and say calculate position, then pass in zero, and then calculate position, then pass in zero. If I hit save, you can see that we get the same result. Now if I change this to one, the ball will be moved down by one row, two, three, if I change this to one, etc. Now, how about taking these two lines and put them inside a function, another function called place ball. So this function here will take in a row and a column 
and and place the ball in the right position here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go and use this place ball here place ball and then pass in zero zero so i'm going to go for zero the row zero then the column zero and here i'm going to use row here instead of three and column here instead of three and now if i had save you can see that it's not working why because we can't actually this ball uh, object from the function place ball and i'm not going to go and pass that down to the place ball function i'm just going to go into the elements and create an object called ball and set it to undefined by default now i'm going to go here instead of using a const i'm going to use elements that ball and now i can access this elements that ball that i will set to this dev here so i can now access this dev from anywhere in my code so now let's go and use elements that ball instead of just ball and instead of just ball here now let's do the same thing with place ball here and you can see now that it's working let's go and change the row to five or four for example let's change this to two and it's working just fine well if this was a generated ball the ball should appear here in the middle at the top here so for the row it's going to be minus one and for the column it's going to be three this is where i want the ball to appear when generated well let's just take those two numbers here and put them inside a variable here or a property object called ball and then use position here and then it's going to have a row of minus one and a column of three now instead of using those numbers i'm going to use game that ball that position that row and then game that ball that position that column hit save now the ball will appear in this place here and that's it for positioning the ball generating a new ball now it's time to go and actually move the ball when i move the cursor over the columns and now what we need to do is to move the ball uh, when i move the cursor over the, the columns but you can see now that i don't have the hover effect and let's fix that so if i go to the index.html and then add the class name column hover and if i hover over this it's not working and that's because i have this element this game over dev that's on top of this one here so when i hover with the cursor here i'm actually hovering over the game over dev not the columns one so to fix that i'm going to play with the z index here because i positioned them or i absolutely positioned them now if i go here and say z index for example two now the column will be on top of the game over dev now if i hover over this you can see the hover effect now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go and select all of these columns so let's do that so i'm going to go here and say columns then document that query selector all not just query selector so i want to select all the columns so if i go and console log elements dot columns let's see what we're gonna get so if i go here you can see i have seven nodes and this is the first column etc so now i can just go because this is an array now columns is an array i can go here and see all elements dot columns that for each then column what I want to do is I'm just going to go and add column dot class list that add the class name column hover. So if I go now and hover over the columns, you can see the hover effect. Now I'm actually going to go and put this inside a function called function add hover effect to columns and run the code. Let's call the function and let's go and put this under the hoppers function. Now I can have that hover effect. Now I want to change the ball position here, like the row and column, or just the column when I hover over this columns here. So when I hover over this column, I want to get its number and then change the ball position here and then place the ball in the right position. So how can I do that? I'm just gonna go and add an event listener. So let's go and do that. So elements.columns that for each column, what I want to do, I'm gonna add an event listener. Which is going to be mouse over so when i hover over the column this will trigger or call this function here so what i want to do is i'm just going to go in console log that column that data set let's actually call this element dot column and what this means is i'm going to go and get this data attribute column so i'm going to get the zero one two three etc so if i go back here let's hit save open to console column is not defined so column element here let's hit save now if i hover over this it's a zero one two three four five six that's great the problem is this is not a number this is 
just a string so let's go and say const then column from the column element that data set and then let's go and use number object to convert the column here a string to a number now if i console log now you can see that's now it's a number not a string well that's it now that i have got that column let's go and change the ball position column to that column so i'm just going to go here change the game dot ball that position that column to the column here that i hover over now let's go and call place ball with the same position row and column from generating the ball function here so if i copy this and paste in here hit save now if i go and hover over this you can see that the ball keeps following the column that i have hovered now I'm going to go and take this code here and put it inside a function called change column. Now if I go and pass the function change column to the event listener, now if I go and hover over the columns, you can see that the ball doesn't follow me because column element here is not defined inside this function. It's here, but we didn't pass it to change column. And I'm not going to go actually and pass that. I'm just going to go and pass the event here that's going to be passed automatically by event listener as the first parameter to change column so now the event here will be instead of column elements it's going to be event that target that's the same thing as this column element here now if i hit save then go back you can see now that the ball will follow me when i hover over a column and that's it for changing the column of the ball and let's move on to the next step Now, when I hover over uh, a column, then click, the ball should fall. Let's implement that. So first, let's go and clean up this code here. So I'm going to go here and say control uh, game and exactly change column. So I'm changing the column of the ball. Now let's go and take this to the bottom here. Hit save. Now let's go to the top and let's go and add a click event listener to the columns. So we added the mouse over. Now let's add a click event. Let's call a function called play. So whenever I click on that, I'm going to call a function called play if i hit save we need to create that function play this also will take in the event and let's go and get the column because we're going to need that so let's go and get the column and let's console log that column so if i go and open the console and then click here it says four zero that's the column i have clicked on now let's go and actually say plus play now inside this function play, I want to move the ball to the bottom to a given row, for example, the fifth row or the fourth or the third row. So how can I do that? It's simple. I'm just going to go and increment the top position of the ball by uh, an amount of pixels till it gets to that position and then stop. So how can I implement that? Let's go and see how. So I'm going to go and create a function called free fall because it's going to be actually free fall. And then I'm going to take the elements that ball that style that top position i'm going to get the old top position of the ball plus equals an amount 10 for example and then i'm going to call free fall again so this function will keep calling itself while incrementing the position of the ball the top position by 10. let's go call this for the first time and hit save let's now click and it's not working why because this is a string so this is like minus 90 pixels plus 10 and this will be equal i guess to minus 90 pixels 10. Let's actually see what we're going to get. So if I go and say minus 90 pixels plus 10 a number, you can see what we get here. So that's not going to work. Uh, so we need to assign this a number with pixel at the end. So to fix this, what I will do is I'm going to go and use a method called offset top here, which is the same as this one here. Instead, they are not the same. One is a string and the other is a number. So let's get rid of this one for now. If I go here and then click, you can see that we have in minus 90 pixels for the style that top property. And for offset top, we have a number minus 90 without the pixels. This is a number and this is a string. So these two here are the same, but this is a number, this is not. Now what I will do here is I'm going to go and convert that to pixels to increment that top position by 10 and then assign it to this top position. And let's see what we'll get. So if I click, you can see that the ball has fallen to the bottom and it keeps falling until what until i get maximum call stack styles exceed so what i will do here instead of just calling the function i'm going to use request animation frame now if i click on the ball you can see it falling 
and that's great that was smooth so that's what we're actually going to do and i'm going actually to call this with a request animation frame as well so now i'm not going to go increments by 10 of course but i'm going to make this look like a real free fall how to do that i'm going to create some variables here let's say const gravity so when things fall that's because of gravity so let's set this to 0 0.1 for now and then let's go and create a variable called position and set it to zero then a velocity or speed that's going to be zero now what i will do here is i'm going to keep incrementing the position by the velocity right and then i'm going to increment the velocity by the gravity so incrementing velocity by 0 0.1 each time and incrementing the position by the velocity and now that's what i'm going to use here now if i go and hit or click the column i it looks like a free fall now but i need to go and stop the ball when it hits like a row a given row so how can i do that i'm going to use an if statement so i need to keep free fall just if the top position of the ball equals uh, the top position of this row or this row here so how to do that let's go actually and put this in here and let's go and use this so if the elements double the offset top is less or equal than the top position of this row that's going to be calculate ball position and i'm going to give it that row it's going to be the fifth row so calculate ball position five row this will give us the amount of pixels for this row and if the elements that ball the offset top is less than that i this means that i didn't get to that row yet so i want to request animation frame free fall so i want to keep free falling but when this is greater than this uh, amount here i don't want to call free fall anymore so let's go and see what will happen you can see that i have stopped there which is great now if i go and say for example four oh it didn't stop at four let's say three it almost stopped there but it's not very precise so how i can fix that now let's go and use element.ball.start.top and then set it equal to whatever this position was and of course i need to make this in or convert it to pixels and now if i had save and then go and click you can see that the ball goes directly to that position why because i need to use an fl statement here so I don't want to go and request animation free fall, then set that top of position of the ball to this position here right away. So now I, if I go and click, you can see that the ball moves or free fall until that, the, the exact hole. So one thing I want to do, I don't want to go and use this number here. So I'm just going to go and use like row equals three and then use row here. Now, if I go and click, if I set this, for example, to two, it's going to stop. Uh, and the second row here well if you are like me and you don't like this fl statement we can get rid of this and use return here so this will do the same job so if i click now it's it's working just fine now let's use this make this five now if i click here it will stop at the fifth row now when the ball gets to the right hole i want it to bounce like in the final project so if i click you can see that bounce so to do that i'm going to create a variable called bounce here equals let's say six and you can choose whatever amount suits you and now what i want to do is to go and decrement the position by this bounce just after i have positioned the ball in the right hole so i'm going to go and set the position equals to minus bounce and then after i have changed the position nothing's going to happen if i didn't call free fall again so this can take effect so i'm going to go and copy this and paste it just after this change here now if i go and click well we can't see the bounce because it's a small number let's use for example 40. if i hit now you can see it bouncing but it keeps bouncing lots of times which is not what we want to do so i'm going to go and decrement the bounce so i'm going to decrement position by the bounce but i also want to decrement the bounce next time by an amount let's say five now if i go and click you can see that it bounces and if i go to the next one it doesn't go to the top why because this bounce here is now a negative number and it's back so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go and use an f statement and check if the bounce is greater than zero so if actually we have a bounce then that's when we want to request animation frame free fall now if i go and click if i change this 
that's great now let's go and change this row to for example let's say three if i change it to three i don't want the bounds to be this amount here if for example i am under row one i don't want the bounds to be this much here but on the six that's reasonable because this is a big distance so to fix that i'm going to change the bounds here to six and then i'm going to use bounds here times that row so now if the row was bigger the bounce will be bigger if the row was smaller the bounce will also be smaller so if i go and click you can see that the bounce was minimal now if i go and use for example five here you can see that the bounce now is bigger so if i go for example say three oh that was great And now if I go and click, the ball falls in the hole, but we don't see the ball for the other player at the top here. So we need to go now and create a function called switch players. So I'll take no parameters. Well, this function will actually just switch between the two players, the player here and the opponent. And we need another property here called last player. So we, we need to keep track of the player that played last. So I'm going to initialize this with undefined now inside my function i'm going to check if last player so i should say game first so if this was undefined so if this was undefined what i want to do is i'm just going to go and initialize that game dot last player with the game that ball type that player so we're going to start with the red player now else if we have last player means that someone has played then we need to check if so this will be equal so we're going to check if this last player was this player here so i'm going to use a ternary operator here so if this was true means it was the player that played last i'm going to use here the opponent else if it was the, the opponent i'm going to use the player here so switch player let's move this down to to the helpers here now let's do the same thing for generate ball just going to go and put it in here now instead of generating the ball with this uh hard-coded player let's use the last player now if i had save the last player is undefined we don't see any ball so let's call switch players function if i had save so let's open the console last player is not defined that's because I need to use a game here. Now you can see the ball in there. Now if I go and click, nothing's going to happen. Because I need to go here inside our play function. So now when the bounce is done, so if bounce now is less than zero, we're not going to call request animation frame, but else we're going to give the turn to the other player to play. So I will go and switch players again, and then generate a new ball with the last player. So here if I click, you can see the ball falling there. Again, I need to use here game that last player. So if I go and click, now you can see the ball for the other player is generated. Now the next one is going to be red, etc. Now I am not a fan of uh, F else. So I'm going to use return here and then get rid of this else. Now let's check that. And that's great. Now the only problem is that when I go and click here, you can see that the ball has fallen in a taken hole, which is not great. So now what we need to do in the next step is we need to keep track of our board here. And we're going to save this here in a two-dimensional array. So to keep track of every hole in our board. So let's do that. But now let's go and create a board array, a two-dimensional array. But first let's go and create some dimension here dimensions of the board so here we have six rows and seven columns so let's just save that so six rows and columns is going to be seven now using these dimensions we're going to create a two-dimensional array so it's going to be called board and it's going to be an empty array from now now let's go and create that board so i'm just going to go and use a for loop here so for let r equals zero then r is less than game dot dimension dot rows and then r plus plus each time so i'm going to set the board with index r equal to an array here now let's just copy that here and then use here c for column and then here it's going to be columns now 
I should say here board that game. So game that board. The same thing for this one here. Now here I should use C. So each uh, element in this two-dimensional board will be an empty array or an empty string. So now if I go and console log our game that the board. Let's open this. Now you can see I have an array with six elements, and if each element is another array with empty strings here. So we have here six rows and seven columns. Now whenever I play, when the ball is in this hole, I should go and change that empty string with the name of the ball type here. So let's do that. So I'm going to go here in our play function in free fall. And just after the bounce has finished, I'm going to go and set the game that board with the row that ha that the ball has fallen in with the column the user has chosen. Set that to the last player. And I also need to use game here. Now let's go and console log our game dot board. So if I had save, open the console. Now if I put that ball there, let's open our board. Now the player is here, just like we can see here in our board. Now if I put this here in the middle, you can see now in our board it's now in the middle and now we can keep track of the taken holes. Now how can we use that for not like making the ball fall in a taken a hole? It's simple. So I'm just going to go here and take this to the top. So I'm going to check for empty holes in a column. So I'm going to this column, for example, and check for empty holes. If I have three empty holes, this means that the ball can be put in here. So how can I check for the empty like holes? It's simple. So I'm just going to go and use a full loop again. Let r equals zero. r is less than the game that, that they mentioned that rows r plus plus. So I'm going to check if game that board with index row actually r and then the column that the user has chosen here on the board. If this is empty, this means that it's not taken. So if not empty, this means true. Then I want to go and increment a variable called empty holes that I will initialize here. Empty holes with zero. So now I'm going to use this empty holes number to get the row that the ball has to fall in. So I have the column. Now I will get the row. So here, let's take this as an example. I have here one, two, three, four, five, six holes. But for the row, this is the fifth row. So the number of the row would always be the number of the holes minus one. So empty holes here minus one is going to be the number of the row. And let's just use const because I'm not going to go and change this uh, anywhere. Now I'm going to use this row and this column here to save the game dot player, and also to put the ball in that right row. So that's it. Let's go and check if this works. So if I click, click again, click again, click again, and you can see that it's working. This is great. I If I open the console, I can see now that I have player, player, opponent, opponent, player, etc. So this is actually great. Now let's go and see what will happen if I reach the top and click. So cannot set properties of undefined sin to add free fall because I now put in the ball in the board with r equals to minus one. So I'm going to check here if empty holes not. So if it's zero, I will just return. And let's get rid of this color braces here. Hit save. Now let's go back and check. Open the console first. Now if I click, nothing's happening because now I have zero empty holes. So if I have zero empty holes, I will return. I will not do anything else uh, after. And now that I can put the balls in top of each other, now it's time to check if it's a game over, if the user has connected four balls. So let's do that. But now it's time to check if the user has uh, four connected balls. So we need to go to the bottom here inside our play function then inside our free fall function and just after the ball has been placed we're going to check check for game over so let's go and create a function or call the function that we're going to create let's call it check for four in a row function so we're going to check if this is 
true then we're going to console log game over and we need to return uh, if it's not game over we so we just switch players and generate a new ball and then continue playing so let's go and create our function here so function check for four in a row so this function will take in as a parameter our game that board here and let's pass that as a parameter here and then what we need to do is we need to do four checks the fourth check is check for let's just call this horizontal if the user or the player has put four in a row horizontally then we need to check if the user have connected the balls vertically then diagonal for diagonal we need to do two checks so one for uh, we're going to start from top left from here then go into the bottom right so to bottom right the other way is going from uh, bottom left to top right so bottom bottom left to top right well so these are the checks we need to do if none of the checks uh, returns true then we return false at the end so no winner first let's go and create two constants one is called rows we're going to check the board that length and then the number of columns equals board that with index zero so that's the row then length and then const number number of balls in a row so it's checking for four so this will be four and now let's go and see the logic behind checking for four in a row horizontally vertically and diagonally well let's start with horizontal check so we have our board here we have rows starting from zero index and end at five we have six rows same thing for columns we have seven columns starting from zero index and end at six index now when the user puts the balls or connect them uh, horizontally this is the cases we need to check for so this is the first case the second case the third case and the fourth case and beyond that it's not possible so we can't put the balls in this way here so the last index we need to check for is three here and the number three here is just the number of columns which is seven minus four and four is the number of balls so columns the number of columns minus the number of balls is the last index we need to check for the columns for the rows we don't have any conditions so we need to go from the first row till the last one so in terms of code we're going to use two full loops the first one is for the row so i want to check this row after i finish this then i will go to the next one etc so i'm going to start from zero and then at r uh, less than rows now for the columns i'm going to go and start from zero then check if i have four balls in a row and then go to the next one go to the third one but i want to stop here which means c less than or equal columns minus the number of balls so this is where i will stop and then i'm going to use an f statement and check if our same and that null so this function is something that we will create so we'll pass it an array and then some values and then check if these values here are all the same value and they are not null so here i'm checking for both with rc for example this one here then both with the same row then c plus one so this one here then both are c plus two so this one here then both are c plus three so this ball here so if all these four here have the same value that means that we have four balls in a row so that's a win so if this is true we're going to return true means this is a game over and we have a winner and now for the vertical check it's going to be the same except we're not going to talk about columns we're going to talk about rows this time so we are checking vertically here so the last uh, index here is going to be rows minus number of balls so it's going to be two two here just like six the number of rows minus four that's two so in terms of code that's a full loop starting from zero for rows and then add rows minus number of balls and then for the columns i don't have a problem i need to go from the first one zero till the last one six and then i want to check if these values here are the same and not null so board rc is this one here board r plus one is this one here so r2 plus one is three plus two is four plus three is five and we need to keep the column uh, the same now that's it for the vertical check now let's go for diagonal check top left to bottom right so this way here now this is a valid uh, way to put the balls now this is also a valid way a valid way but this is not a valid way so we can see that the last uh, number for rows is two so it's just again rows minus the number of balls same thing for columns this is valid this is valid this is valid this is not valid so again for the columns the last one the last index is the columns minus number of balls so this time in terms of code we need two full loops like always but this time both the rows and the columns will stop at rows minus number of balls for rows and columns minus number of 
balls for the columns. Now I need to check if uh, these four values are same and not null. And here I'm going to check for this one, if it's the same as this one here. And this one is just 0 plus 1 for the rows and 0 plus 1 for the columns. That's why I'm using an R plus 1 and then C plus 1. Then the same thing here, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 2 for columns, 0 plus 3 for rows, 0 plus 3 for columns. Now for diagonally check from bottom left to top right. So this is not a valid option. So we're not going to start this time our full loop from zero. We're not going to start it from one. We're not going to start it from two. And we need to start it from three. So that's actually the numbers of balls minus one. And then for columns, this is actually a valid option. The same for this one, the same for this one, the same for this one. But I cannot go beyond this one here. So for columns, the last uh, index is calls minus number of balls and for rows we need to start at three and then stop at five so we're going to use a full loop so r will start at the number of balls minus one ends at rows and then for the columns it will start from zero then ends at the cause minus number of balls then i need to check again if these four values are same and not null so here for the values i have the board with r and c for example this one i need to go to the top here so r minus one so i'm going to go from three to two so that's r minus one r minus two r minus three for the rows but for the columns i'm going to go to the right so this is c this is c plus one this is c plus two this is c plus three and that's it for the uh, logic behind this checks now let's go and type in our code and see if it works and now i'm back we have our function check for four in a row let's go for the horizontal check so i'm going to go here and then paste in the code so we're going to start from r zero and then the row minus rows but we're going to stop at cause minus number of balls so let's go and create this function r same and not null so i'm going to go here and let's add a command called helper so let's create that function so it's going to take in an array of values. So let's call this values. And then it will just return. What I will return is values that every. So I want to check if every value in that values array. And if this is the first time you're hearing about every, every is just one of the array methods. I have a whole video about all the methods of the array object in JavaScript. You can find it in my channel or here. And, and you can also find a video that's specific to the every method. So every method will go and taking a callback function here. So this callback function will take in as the first parameter a value from the values in that array. So we have the values array, which is this array here. Now the value is going to be this value here. So the every method here expects the callback here to return a Boolean. So if all the values here in our array return true, then all the values are the same. But if just one of the values return false, then they are not the same. So I'm going to check if the value is true. This means that it's not null and if that value is the same as the first one in the array so i don't need to use this i'm just going to get rid of this so i'm going to check if the value is not null and find also if the value is the same as the first one in the array now i'm going to hit save let's go now and see what we need to do here so we're going to go through our board and then let's call this actually board so what i'm doing here um, I'm going to go and check if that cell is empty. I'm just going to go and continue. I don't want to go and use this function and lose memory just for free. So if this is an empty cell, continue and go to the next one. Now, if our same not null, then that's a win. I'm going to return this object here. And this object has some properties that I need uh, when game over. So the row where I found the four connected or the start of the four connected balls and the column also, then the direction. Because this is horizontal, so I'm going to send direction of zero degrees. Now let's go and see what we need to do for the vertical check. So I'm just going to go and copy that because it's almost the same thing, except for the columns, I need to check for all the columns. But for rows, I need to stop at rows minus number of balls. Then I need to check again if the cell is empty. I'm just going to go and continue. If not, let's go and check if all these are the same. If they are the same, I'm going to return the same object. So we have a row and a column. That's the start of our uh, connected four balls then the direction here is not going to be zero because this is vertical it's going to be 90 degrees now for diagonal top left to bottom right we see that the last number of rows is rows minus number of balls and the same thing for the number of columns and again if the cell is empty continue if are the same and not null if all these cells are the same i'm going to return the number of the row the column and the direction this time is going to be 45 degrees and last for diagonal we said we're going to start this time at number of balls minus one and then for the columns, we're going to stop at calls minus number of balls. Again, if the cell is empty, continue. If all these are true or are same and not null, we return the row, the number of columns, and now the direction is minus 45. 
so that's the diagonal bottom left to top right now let's hit save and let's go to the top here in our play function free fall then f check for in row game board let's actually go and use a state here state for the game over i'm just gonna call it state i don't have a better name now let's go and check f state let's console log state and also let's console log game over after so i'm going to open the console here let's go and put these so calls is not defined for in a row 97 okay so here i'm just gonna go and call this calls let's go back let's open the console so i'm going to put the balls like vertically and i didn't get anything so let's go back to our function so it's check for four in a row so vertical here well you can see that it's the same code so here i have actually to increment the number of rows and keep the same column so r plus two then r plus three so let's go and check again so if i go and put this vertically and i didn't get anything let's go back to our function so for vertical oh and an equal sign here so we need to actually go tell rows minus number of balls so let's go back again to this line here let's open the console so let's go and put four balls in a row vertically all right so now you can see i have here the number of the columns is two row is true so the ball is here so that's two for the row and that's two for the column that's great it says 90 degrees so this is zero degrees this is 90 degrees this is 45 degrees this is minus 45 degrees so this is actually working now let's go and check if it works for when i put the balls horizontally okay now it says the column the row and the direction is zero and that's great so let's go and check when I connect four balls diagonally. And yeah, it says now the direction is minus 45. That's from bottom left to top right, which is great. Now let's go and see if I put them diagonally, but in from top left to bottom right. And that's great it says now direction is 45 and now it's time to go and draw a line over the connected bolts well now it's time to go and add a line through the connected four bolts so let's go here first and then destructure the state the object we get from our check for four in a row function so const then equals state so we get the number of the row and the column and then the direction so then I'm going to pass these to the, the function. So I'm going to call the function animate animate line. And then I'm going to pass all the three here to that function. Now the animate line will take the row and the column to calculate the position of the line and direction to rotate the uh, line. So it could be horizontal or vertical or diagonal. So let's go and create animate line as a helper function. So a function then animate line for taking row and column and direction so then i'm going to just go and uh, actually first uh, target the line or the, the dev so let's go to our elements at the top and then create another property line document that query selector then the class name is going to be line so now i can play with this i can change its position etc so let's go here let's say line that style that top position uh actually I need to say elements first equals i need to use two pixel because this needs pixels and then i'm going to use the same uh function i used for the ball which is calculate uh, position let's go and take a look on that so calculate position is just taking row or column then it multiplies that by the game that stated amount and then add some offset here so i can get the position in pixels from just row or column so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to go and, ca and copy this and then pass in the row for top i'm going to duplicate the line and now i'm going to say left then let's say column and then let's go and say elements that line that style 
that transform. So now I need to go and uh, and rotate the line. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to uh, use the back text. So rotate, then it's going to be the direction here, and this would be n degrees. And now based on the direction, I would add one of these classes. So if I go to the bottom here, we have our line, and we can add then a horizontal or vertical or diagonal, so we can change its width from zero pixels to, to this uh, width here. So remember that the line isn't showing here just because the width is zero pixels. So when we add this horizontal or vertical or diagonal classes to the dev with line, they will just change the width from zero to uh, this uh, width here. And that's what we're going to do. So let's go here and create a const called class name. And we need to do a check. So if the direction here is zero, this means it's going to be horizontal. Horizontal. Else, if the direction was 90, it's going to be it's going to be uh, vertical. Else, if it's 45 or minus 45, it's going to be diagonal. That's it. And now to add uh, that class name to the line uh, element, I'm just going to use the class list property and then add. So this will add this class name to the class list of this element here. Now, I'm not going to go and play to check every uh, possible case. So let's go and call this right away. So I'm just going to go here and call it, let's say with zero, then zero, then zero. So you can see a line here. And you can see here that the line didn't start from the center of the first ball and ends in the center of the last one, of the fourth ball. So I'm going to fix that by using a const here called offset. And I'm going to give it a top uh, value and a left value. So I'm going to move this by an offset uh, to the left, and uh, to the right, and an offset to the bottom. So I'm just going to go and use 35, then 35 for both. So let's go and add that here. So offset that top for the top. And you can see now that it's like in the middle. Now let's go and use left here. And now you can see it there in the center. Now if I go and use 90 for the direction, you can see that it's not centered again for when it's uh, vertical. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and uh, change the offset if the direction was 90. So I'm going to go and say if direction is 90, I'm just going to go and set the offset that left to 45. And that's that. So let's go and check for the other directions, 45. And it's, uh, it's looking great. So now I just need to get rid of this. And then we are calling that from here. So let's get rid of this line. And then let's check this for real. So I'm going to try. And you can see the line through the four balls. So we still have some problems with the game. We're going to fix them in a minute. So let's go and refresh and try to put the balls diagonally. Yeah, and you can see the line through the four connected poles. And that's it for animate the line. Now it's time to go and handle the score. Well, now let's go and create the score object. That's where we're going to save the uh, player's score. So I'm going to go to the variables, then game, then score. So let's call this score. And then I'm going to have the two keys, one for opponent. I'm going to set it to zero and one for player. And I'm going to set it to zero. So I'm going to use opponent here, just like we have it here, all uppercase, player, just like we have it here, all uppercase. So now when the game is over, so when the game is over, I have this uh, game that last player. This could be player uppercase or opponent uppercase. So it's simple. I'm just going to go and say game dot score, and then I'm going to open the square brackets. I'm not going to use the dot because I don't know if it is the opponent or the player unless I'm planning to use an if statement to check which one is, is the last player. That's why I'm going to use square brackets. I'm just going to pass in then the game that last played. And that's how I'm going to access that uh, value here. This value here or this one here. And then I'm going to use plus plus to increment that by one. So let's go now and update the score in HTML. So I'm going to need to uh, target this element here. So let's go to the top and then say score equals document dot query selector then dot score. And then let's go to the bottom here. And then let's say score dot inner 
HTML, uh, I should say elements first, equals, I'm going to use some back text here, so it's going to be game.score.player, and then it's going to be the game.score.opponent. I'm going to hit save, and now let's go and check if that works. Uh, you can see here that I have one. Now, if I refresh, the score is gone, so we need to go and actually save this. So I'm going to use local storage that set item, and here I need a key. So let's go and create the key. So here, when I say score, I'm just going to go and say key, and let's call this uh, four in row score. Let's go now and use that key. So where is it? So here I'm going to say game.score.key and then what I want to save is the game.score and I don't want to save it as a JavaScript object. I'm going to uh, save it as a JSON. So JSON.stringify and hit save. So let's go and check if this works. So I'm going to play, but first let's go and open the console, go to application, then local storage, then the origin. Now we don't have any key value pairs here. So let's go and play and see what's going to happen. And now you can see how we have saved that. Now if I refresh, I don't get it, but it's there. It's saved, but I don't have it here. That's because when I refresh, I set this equal to zero and also this to zero. So I don't want to go and set this to zero unless I have nothing in the local storage. So first I'm going to go and say saved score equals then local storage dot get item. Then it's going to be game dot score dot key. So if there is something in the local storage, we're going to get that and save it uh, here in this constant. But if there is nothing, this would return null. So let's go and check if we have a saved score. We have saved score. Then what I want to do is I'm going to say game.score.opponent equals our saved score.opponent. And also game.score.player is going to be equal to our saved score.opponent player. If you don't have that, if it's null, then we just continue and the opponent is zero and player is zero for the score. Again, this would be just a string, so I, I will need to JSON that parse. And then hit save. Now, if I go and refresh, we expect to see one here. So if I refresh, we don't get the one. So let's go and open the console and see what's happening. So let's go and console log the saved score. Yeah, the problem here is I didn't update the score. So I shall update the score. So let's go and create a function called update score. And let's go and create that function. So here at the bottom, in just after helpers, let's go and say function, then update score. And I'm just going to go and copy these two lines here and put them in update score. And let's go and call update score. And we can see already one in there. And now let's go and reset the score. So when we click on this button, this should reset the score to zero for both players. So to do that, we first need to enable this button because it's disabled. So let's go then and select our reset score button. This button here, this element, not this dev. So I'm going to go to the top, then say reset score. Let's call this button. It's going to be document that query selector, then the class name and then button. So reset score button. Let's go to the game over state here and let's go and say here reset score button that I first need to use elements, then disabled disabled equals false. So I'm going to set this disabled to false to enable it. So let's go and check if this works. So I'm just gonna go and get to the game over state again. Yeah, you can see now that the reset score is now enabled. If I click on it, nothing's happening because I need to add an event listener. So I'm going to go here just after this. So let's go and say elements that uh, reset score button that add an event listener. And it's going to be a click event. And then I'm going to run this function. All I need to do is just go and say game that score that player is going to be zero and then game that score that opponent equals 
0. And for this to take effect, we need to call again the update score function. So we can update the uh, HTML here, the inner HTML here, and we also uh, save this to the local storage. So if I go to the update function, we change the inner HTML here and then save it to the local storage. So let's hit save. Now let's go and get to the game over state. Now if I click on reset score, it says zero, 0. And that's it for reset score. Let's go now and talk about play again. Well now let's go and handle the play again button. So we first need to go and target this play again button here. So I'm going to go into elements, then again call it play again button, just like we did with reset score button. So it's going to be a document that query selector, then our class name play again, then the button inside. So let's go and add an event listener to this play again button. I'm just gonna get rid of this comment. Let's go and say elements dot play again button dot add event listener. And then click. And then I'm going to call a function start game. To start the game again, let's go and create the function just under that event listener. It's going to be called start a game. And let's console log just start for now. And I shall say you just click, not click one. So now let's go and go to the game over. So we will check for the game over. So I also need to disable the play again here. Or actually enable the play again button. So we can click on it. And I guess that's it. Let's go back to our start again. And let's see what we get if we get to a game over. So now I can see we have reset score and play again. If I click on reset score, this will reset the score. If I click on play again, we can say start. So now what we need to do in our start game function is straightforward. So we need to go and clear the board. So the element, the elements that balls should be empty. So inner HTML should be an empty string. And then we need to get rid of this line here. So we're going just to go and uh, use line in that class list. And we should remove all the classes that we have added to the line. Uh, like uh, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. So I'm just going to keep line. And then I need to go and enable or disable those buttons. So let's just go here and just copy these buttons here. And then go here. Well, now you can see that I have these two lines repeated twice here and when we check for a game over. So I, so I not use a function. So I'm going to go and cut this and let's go to our uh, to helpers and then create a function called disable buttons. And then this would take like a state here, whether they will be disabled or enabled. So this will be true or false. So I'm going to paste those uh, two lines and then use state here instead of false. So now here, I'm just going to go and call disable disable buttons. Do I want to disable them here? No, I want to enable them. So false. And then in start game, I want to disable those uh, those uh, buttons. So I'm just going to go and call disable buttons, this time with true. Not said. Now after I have disabled the buttons, I want to go and uh, clear the array board. So here we have our board array. We need now to go and clear that. So if I go here, you can see this is where we actually create the board or where we actually make the elements in the board all empty strings. So why not call this function reset board? So it actually resets the board. So I'm just going to go and take this down to helpers. And now let's go and call it from start game. So reset board. And then I want to go and after I reset the board, I will need to switch players. So I want to give the turn to the other player. And then I want to go and actually generate the ball for that player. So game that last player. And now if you notice, the start game function is doing actually what we do normally when we start the game, like when the user loads the game in the browser or opens the, the index.html file to play the game. So we need this to be empty, the line must not be shown. We disable the buttons, we reset the board, we switch players, we generate ball. This is something we all did. So for example, let's minimize this. So we switch player. So that's what we did here. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And then we generated the ball. That's the same thing we need to do when we start the game. Now I'm just going to go and take this and put it inside of here. So add hover effect, not effect T. So let's just fix that. Hover effect. So we're basically uh, doing the same thing we, 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 we've done when we run the game for the first time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and take update score as well and put it in here. So now I think the, the code looks a little bit cleaner. So we have our elements at the top. 
the variables. So this is where we get the score. So we we control our game here. So this is our function start start game, and this is our function play, and we have the helpers here. And now all I need to do to start the game, because you can see we don't have the ball here, is just go and call the start game function, and that's it. So you can see now that I can play the game. So if I go now and open the console, and then play, and then try to get to the game over state. So you can see that we have the reset score. If I click on this, you can see we have 0, 0, play again. And we can see that the ball now is blue, uh, because the last one played was red. And we pl can play again the game. Well, that's it. Now, let's go and add some sound effects to our game. Well, now let's add some sound effects to the game. Uh, we have three sounds here and the audio. So we have collision, scratch, and select column. So select column is for when I hover over a column. Scratch is when we have a game over and then we drop that line over the balls. Collision is when the ball falls into the hole. So let's go in our game here and then create a sound object. And then we would have like a collision sound that's going to be a new audio. And then I must give it the, the path for that audio. So collision. Then it's going to be uh, the one for change, change column audio. It's going to be new audio again, then assets, then audio, then change or select column. So let's call this select column as well. Select column. Then it's going to be, let's call this scratch, I guess. So scratch sound. So let's go and use this audio or this sounds here. So I'm going to go to change column function. So we have here the change column. So I'm just gonna go and use game that sounds that collision or that select column dot play. So I'm going to play select column. Let's hit save, and you can hear the sound. Now let's go to animate line. So this is where we draw the line over the over the balls. So just after adding the class name, I'm just gonna go here and say game then that sounds that uh, scratch I guess then that play. Let's go and get to a game over. And you can hear the scratch whenever we draw uh, the line. So let's go now into our play function. So when the ball hits or gets in a hole, we then call or play the sound, the collision sound that play. So let's go and check if that collision sound uh, works. And it does. Well, the sounds made our game alive, that's great, but we still have lots of issues we need to fix, and that's what we're going to do next. Well, let's go and fix the first issue, and that is, when I click and click right away, we can see that things get messed up. So, we need to prevent that. So, when the ball is falling and we click again, we don't need to call the play function again. So to fix that in code, we need to go in our game variables and then create uh, uh, another property called is ball fallen. So we're going to check if the ball is falling or not. So I'm going to initialize this with false when the game starts. So is ball fallen? False. So the ball is not fallen. So we can click and play. But if it's true, we don't want to click and play. So in our function play, I need to go and check first if is the ball fallen is. So I need to say game then is ball fallen. So if this is true, meaning that the ball is falling, I want to return. So I don't want to to go and play. That's it. Well, if this is false, if the ball is not falling, I want to play. But right away, I want to set the game that is ball falling to true. So to prevent the next click, the user might do. And then when the ball gets in the hole, so when we like finish all our uh, logic here, just after uh, the ball is finished falling, so we need to go and set again the game that is falling to false. Now let's go and check if I click and click again right away. So now you can see that we can't play until the ball reaches the hole. So just one ball at a time. And that's great. Now let's go and fix the next issue. Now the second issue is something that we have just created by uh, implementing the game is fallen logic. So now if I go here and click to make the ball fall, the, the ball won't fall because we don't have any empty holes on in this column. So we return. So we returned here while the game that is ball falling is true. So when I go to the next column and click, this won't fall because is ball falling is still true. So I need to go here when I don't find any empty holes and I'm going to go and set the game or is ball falling to 
false again. So now let's try. So if I have no empty holes, if I click the ball won't fall, but if I go again to another column, you can see that I can now make the ball fall when I click. And that's it for this issue. Let's go to the next one. And now with the third issue is, so you can see here that when I hover over the other columns, the ball is following me, and that's good. So when the ball is not falling, that's what we want. But when it's falling, I don't want it to like follow me. So to fix that, I just need to go here when I use the mouse over event listener on the column element, I change the column of the ball. So I'm just gonna go here to that function, and then I don't want to go and place the ball. So this is what we use to change the position of the ball. So I don't want to place the ball if the ball is falling. So I want to do that only if the ball is not falling. So not is falling, then place the ball. I also don't want to play the sound unless the ball is not falling. So let's go and hit save. Now if I go here and click, if I move to the other columns, you can see that the ball doesn't follow me. But if it's not falling, you can see that the ball still follow me. And that's great. Now for the fourth issue, is when we get to the game over state. So now when we play, we have this hover effect when I hover over the, the columns, that's great. But when I get to the game over state, I still have the hover effect, which is not uh, right. So we need to remove that. So to add the hover effect, we use the function called add hover effect to columns. And now we need another function called remove, remove hover effect from columns. And this will remove the class name column hover effect from the class list of the column. So let's hit save and now let's go and copy this and then call the function remove for when it's a game over. Hit save, let's go back. Let's get to the game over state. And you can see we don't have the hover effect, which is great. But the problem here is when I click on play again, if I move or hover over the other columns, the ball doesn't follow me. And that's because the ball is still falling. What I mean by that is when I call the play function, we said the game is ball falling to true, so the ball is falling, but then when, when it's a game over, we don't set back that game that is ball falling to false. So it's still set to true. So if I go, for example, to console, and let's say game that is ball falling, you can see that is still set to true. If I set that to false, false, you can see that the ball now will follow me. So let's go here into our start game. So when we start the game, of course the ball is not falling. So let's just go here and say game dot is ball falling is set to false and that will fix the issue. Now let's move on to the next fix. Well, for the last fix, and actually this is not an issue, uh, so we don't need to talk about the fix. It's more like a feature. So in the games that I have played, I, when I hover, for example, over a column and then make the ball fall, when I leave this area here, the ball pops up, not in the last column that I have used, but in the center here. So I would like to do the same with our game here. So it's simple. We just need to add an event listener to this uh, area here. So whenever the mouse leaves the, that area, the position of the column must reset to this column here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, that's the default column. So let's go here into our game uh, variable. So here we have the ball, we have this position, and this is uh, actually the default position. So let's just go and copy this and then put it here and call it default default position. So why I'm doing this? Because this one here changes when we change the position of the ball. This is something I don't change. So let's just go and uppercase it, default position. And now let's go to the elements here. And what we need to do is to go and select this columns element because this element here is this area here. That's where we need to add our event listener. So let's just go and copy that uh, class name. Let's go to game.js. Then here, let's say columns. So it's going to be columns parent. And this would be equal to document that query selector, then our class name columns. Now let's go and add an event listener. So it's going to be here that we should say elements first that add event listener is going to be mouse leave. So when the mouse leaves that uh, parent or the columns parent, then we need to reset the position or the column of the ball to the default one. So I'm just going to go here and say game that ball that position that column is going to be equal to the game that ball that default position that column. Now let's go and check if that works. So if I go here, then click, 
leave you can see now that the ball uh, pops in the center well that's it for our game this is the end of the tutorial i hope you liked it and enjoyed the whole thing i hope you learned something new well if you did don't forget to support me you can like the video do a comment or subscribe well that's it see you in another tutorial